let's go on to our next speaker. Uh, he has a PhD in applied mathematics from the University of Bath. He was imported to Australia as breeding stock. <laughs> Judge for yourself. Um, and after various R&D jobs, he now works in IT for an advertising company. See if you can guess which one. Uh, so please welcome to the stage, John Wilson. Uh, hi, uh, I'm John. I'd like to talk to you about uh, post-colonial sexual dimorphism in Atraxobustus, or how the spider won his spurs. This is the Sydney Funnel Web. Unfortunately, maybe too familiar to some residents of the Harbour City, especially those of us who live on the leafier fringes. Um, it seeks small damp holes to hide in, and once it's found one, it crawls inside and constructs the eponymous funnel-shaped lure across the mouth of the, of the home and waits there to envenom passing prey. If we look at the male, we see it has an intriguing set of spurs on its second set of legs. Conventional biological theory suggests that these tibial spurs arose through natural selection, through sexual selection. Uh, they protect the male from the fangs of the larger female during mating. <laughs> it's, that's the theory. It's ridiculous, but that's the theory. <laughs> Uh, and we can see the spurs here in a little more detail. <laughs> but, <laughs> but <laughs> Prior to the 1920s, there's very little research on this species. They didn't even know if the male and the female were the same animal. Uh, did the spurs even exist? I believe that the spurs have developed in response to unique habitat created by European settlers, uh, using an object that's more traditionally associated with the Australian male, the long neck or the stubby. Oops, go back. So the spider places its spurs against the top of the cap and then, using its whole body, applies substantial force and opens the cap. Very simple. So prior to European colonization, this ideal habitat didn't exist at all. Uh, the increase in beer consumption over the last 200 years has created an enormous number of potential habitats for this creature. And th this has created an evolutionary pressure um, and an advantage for funnel webs that have a spur. Uh, this is the reason for the spur developing very rapidly, especially over the last few decades. <laughs> the, uh, the fearsome and rather aggressive nature of this species is probably the reason why there's a lack of large-scale observational data or facts <laughs> about the species. Uh, but luckily, we do have some yeah, broad statistical trends, which are kind of the same thing. So, um, and, and these provide good evidence about this theory. Um, if we compare the ratio of uh, can versus bottle beer here, or the, the tinny stubby quotient, if you like, um, as canned beer became uh, more widely available in the, uh, the mid-20th century, uh, you can notice that there's a uh, substantial decrease uh, in, in spider bites. Um, more recently, bottle beer has become popular again, uh, and uh, spider bites are on the rise, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> um, now to explain the variation between the sexes. Uh, the female doesn't have the spurs, this is observed. Uh, why is this? There are two simple reasons. Uh, firstly, she is slightly larger, so she can displace the male from more easily settled natural habitats. Uh, there's no evolutionary pressure on her to develop the spurs in that case. Secondly, if we look at the uh, distributions of the sizes of the two uh, sexes uh, and plot them as a Pareto distribution, we can see that the, the median female size, red curve, is just slightly larger than the neck of the bottle. Uh, <laughs> whereas, where, whereas the typical male, blue curve, is, is well able to fit inside the neck of the bottle. Um, this means that it's a male-only habitat, uh, a kind of boozy spider man cave, if you like. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, finally, what are the public policy implications of this work? Um, <laughs> um, I, I think we should all be very concerned about the so-called craft beer revolution. Uh, uh, you can see that there's a very strong correlation between... <laughs> this is real data, by the way. You can see that there's a strong correlation between Atrox sightings and craft breweries in the Greater Sydney area. 
hipsters drinking bottled beer are directly responsible for a frightening rise in spider numbers. <laughs> Moreover, we really need to determine if the funnel web is developing further abilities. Can it pull the cap closed behind it once it enters the bottle? Can it re-screw a tish top? The possibility of aggressive, venomous, and drunk spiders hiding in unopened beer bottles is just too scary to contemplate. <laughs> I strongly recommend that funding be made available for more experimental work. Thank you.